Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Ginger Woodson, and this is the ZenMade Summit. Uh, before I get started, a quick shout out to Amar and his team for putting this together. I'm sure it's a ton of work, and uh, you know we appreciate it. I appreciate it as a presenter, and I know you guys out there uh, learning all kinds of cool stuff uh, appreciate it as well. Uh, this this presentation is going to be about marketing because that's basically what I do these days. Um, a little bit about me and my background so you know who you're listening to. Um, I started a business called Love My Maids back in 2015. I had spent 23 years as a business consultant with Allstate Insurance. And when I, uh, when I got laid off, I decided to uh, start a maid service. Um, and I won't go into why I decided on a maid service, but I think it was a great decision. As it, as it turns out. So I started Love My Maids, you know, just like everybody else. I started with no customers, no revenue, uh, no employees. So, um, you know, we started in the garage of my of my house. And but anyway, long story short, um, in three and a half short years, we were at a million dollars. Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, I think you have to do right. But one of the things that I did that was the most right was that after the year one, I hired Debbie Sardone. Uh, and took cleaning business fundamentals, and that literally launched my business. You know, I jumped from 150 the 150 thousand the first year. Um, took Debbie's course. The next year I was at 450. The next year I was uh, somewhere around 700. I don't remember. But long story short, three and a half years, I'm a million dollar maid service. Um, these days we we do about 120 thousand dollars a month, and uh, you know things are going good. You know, so far, so good. Uh, anyway, after um, we hit the million dollars, I, I started backing out uh, of the business and started another business called Cleaning Business Growth. Um, so I'm absentee owner for Love My Maid, started Cleaning Business Growth, beginning with starting, you know, selling email marketing, Keep. Um, but since then, I've added all kinds of services because all of my clients, what they tell me is they would like a one-stop shop. They, they want to have somebody that can do all their marketing and can be strategic about that marketing by putting all the pieces together uh, and making sure that, um, you know, their business is getting the leads they need to grow. Okay. So that's what I do full time these days is uh, help other cleaning business owners uh, build their business with great marketing. So one of the things we're going to talk about today is what I call my secret sauce, okay? Because everybody wants to know, hey, Ginger, you, you built a, a pretty large business in a short period of time. How did you do it? Okay, so what's the secret sauce? And everybody's got a thousand questions about, um, about marketing. You know, should I run Google Ads? What about Home Advisor? You know, what should I do first? What about Yelp? How much should I spend? Should I do discounts? How about SEO? I heard it's expensive. Anyway, the laundry list is long. And of course, if you're anything like I was when I first started, this is what it felt like. Okay. It was confusing and it made my, my brain hurt. Okay. And of course, I did back then what you probably have done all along is I just did the best I could, made decisions based on, you know, what I knew. And over time, I learned from my experience. Okay. But it really was uh, overwhelming. And I, I clearly remember that that feeling uh, when I first started. So what is the secret sauce? I don't know. Let's see. So here's what I'm going to tell you just to get started. Okay, because this is one thing that I notice with all kinds of clients that I work with is, um, you know, they want to buy a product, like they want to buy Google Ads, or they want to buy SEO or this or that, whatever it is. And what I always try to tell people, it's not about the piece, it's about the puzzle. Okay. Um, it's not about the individual ways you market. It's about how you put them together and how they fit together to achieve your goals. Okay. And what that implies is that you need to know what your goals are, right? And you need to make some smart decisions about how you market to meet those goals so that everything works together. You know, you're not just spending money on this or that and this and that or buying the next shiny object that shows up. OK, it's really about having a marketing strategy and then putting that in place and measuring your results towards your goals. That'll tell you whether your marketing is working better than anything. OK, so let's look at what it means to build a marketing strategy. 
So there's three parts, uh, the way I think about it. Um, first of all, it's your goals. Everything should be oriented towards where you want to go. Okay. Otherwise, you know, you, anything will work if you don't know where you want to go. It's just kind of crazy. So anyway, you got to know where you want to go. And then I know when you're, especially when you're first starting out, when you're a smaller business, um, budget has a lot to do with what you can do. OK, maybe not what you want to do, but it's definitely a constraint you have to deal with. And then lastly, once you figure out your growth goals and your budget. Oh, sorry about that. Should have turned that off. Once you know about your growth goals and your budget, then that's when you start thinking about, you know, where to invest that those precious dollars in marketing so that you can hit your goals. OK, so growth goals are about how much do you want to grow every month? And this is the big end. What level of growth can you effectively manage? Because we all know, especially if you've taken CBF, that growth causes chaos, right? Because you have new employees, you have new customers, and there's nothing that's going to throw chaos into your business uh, more than that. So you have to have some, some ability to manage the growth that you want, okay? So it wouldn't be realistic for most people to want to grow by, say, 40 new recurring customers a month. You know, that would be uh, unrealistic for most. But anyway, how much do you want to grow each month and what level of growth can you manage? Second part is your budget. Um, how much do you want to spend? And maybe more importantly, how much can you afford to spend? OK, we're going to talk a little bit about budget in a second, but that's a that's a key question. The smaller you are, the tighter the budget the less marketing you can do. And that, well, honestly, the smarter you have to be about it because you, you have limited funds to invest. And lastly, once you figure out where you want to go, what you can afford, then let's talk about where you should invest that money and how you're going to market your business. In other words, what marketing vehicles are you going to use or purchase to get toward you know, to your growth goals? Okay. So let's talk about your budget for a second. OK, so most everybody has heard this, but I'll just repeat it very quickly. Um, marketing is what grows your business. Um, you can grow your business with, I guess, uh, organic ways, you know, referrals and things like that. But I will say that that's probably a slow way to go. Most growth has to be purchased with marketing dollars. OK, one of the key things that I always tell people is if you want to go slow, you know, try to put five percent of your monthly revenue into marketing. Moderate growth, put 7%. Aggressive growth, put 10%. And I will tell you, uh, for the first five years of my business, we're at about year six, um, we put 10% or more every single month into marketing, okay? And uh, that's just what we did, and we have, uh, I guess, the results to, to say that that's probably was a good decision. So one of the things I want to mention here is that one of the biggest things that impacts your ability to grow is your ability to hire. OK, and I know everybody's having huge issues right now around hiring. So you really have to think about getting your marketing and your hiring and cadence and making sure those things are synced up, because certainly you can't grow if you don't have employees. But you can't you can't get employees. You know, they, they both play off each other. Right. One thing I will tell you, don't ever be afraid to hire, because I truly believe it's sort of like if you build it, they will come. You hire the employees. I truly believe that getting customers is way easier than getting employees. So hire employees when you find good ones and then market like crazy to fill them up. OK, that's just my thought. So here's an example of monthly budget. So let's say that you're twenty five thousand dollars a month. You know, do some simple math. You know, and let's say you want to grow aggressively. You're going to spend 10% of your monthly revenue on marketing. That's $2,500. Let's assume that it costs $200 to acquire one new recurring customer. I think that's about average. Um, for me, I think it's a little bit less. If you, if you do the right marketing, you can get that number down. But just for the, for the sake of, uh, you know, argument here, let's say that $200 to acquire a new customer. So if you want to grow aggressively, you're going to put $2,500 into marketing and you're going to grow by 12.5 customers every month. OK, and one thing I want to mention when you're thinking about your growth goals is don't forget you have to market above your attrition. So truly, if you want to grow by 10 customers uh, and you typically lose two, right, 
You have to grow by 12 in order to hit your goal. What a lot of us forget is that the whole time we're bringing in customers, you know, we're also mostly, most of us are losing customers. You know, my uh, churn rate has always been somewhere between three and 5%. So I know that three or 5% of my customers are going to leave every month. And because I measure that every month, I can sort of plan. And I know that if I want to grow by X, you know, I've got to subtract out uh, that attrition so that, you know, I actually grow. Um, I know there was a time when uh, I don't know what where we were at, but it was like six or seven hundred thousand and I got stuck. Um, and when I got stuck, I mean, seriously, we I just couldn't figure out how to get this company moving again. And because we had plateaued and uh one of the things that that somebody told me was, hey, you know, are you making sure you're marketing above your attrition? And I did some math. And that truly was the problem is that I really had gotten to the place where I couldn't keep spending just a small amount of money in in marketing. And so I blasted myself off that plateau by probably spending. I don't remember what it was, but it might have been 15 or 20 percent of my re monthly revenue on marketing for a couple of three months. Uh, and that seemed to get some momentum going and, and kind of broke the plateau. But don't forget to always consider your attrition when you're considering your growth. So when it comes to marketing, um, I could have filled up every one of these post-it notes here. Um, but there's a lot of options. You know, there's lead generation services, there's mailers, there's postcards. You can go get door hangers and flyers and business cards. Uh, you can go to things like Yelp. Um, you know, Angie's List, Home Advisor, uh, and so forth. There's just a lot of options out there. And it's no wonder that most of us are confused, uh, especially in the beginning, about which one of these to pick. You know, it's very difficult to figure that out. Um, but I'm going to give you some insight today, hopefully, that will help you. Okay, so here's a here's a little quiz for you. So where do people look when they're looking for a cleaning service? So you know, they're sitting at home, they're like, I want this house cleaned and I need to get it done now. Um, where do they go? Do they run to the mailbox, open it up and hope there's a coupon or something in there? Probably not. OK, maybe there's a little bit of coincidence if a Valpac were to show up that day. But generally, they're not going to go to the mailbox and shop. Right. They're also not going to go to Facebook. OK, now, just like the Valpac, a Facebook ad may fall on them. You know, uh, when they go searching around, you know, they have those pixels and all of that. Um, but they're probably not going to directly go to Facebook to look for a cleaning business. What they're going to do is they're going to go to Google and they're going to do a Google search. So when you ask me about marketing, what I always think about is this. It's all about Google. OK, if that's where people shop, that's where I want to be if I want to sell my services to the people looking, right? It makes total logical sense. And so here's what I'll tell you. If you want to grow your cleaning business, the first page of Google is where you want to be, okay? Not the second, not the third. Those really don't help you a whole lot. Um, there's a little joke that says, where do you hide a dead body? Well, you know where? On the second page of Google, because nobody looks there, okay? You want to be on the first page. You got to be on the first page. OK, that's all there is to it. So let me give you my secret sauce. And it really does revolve a lot around what I just said about Google. OK, um, my secret sauce is this. Number one, make sure your website's in order. OK, you need to have a good website. If you're going to spend precious dollars on marketing that's going to drive traffic to your website, it makes total sense that that website needs to be able to do its job. And its job is to answer people's questions and get them to pick up the phone or fill out a form, period. That's its job. And if it can't do its job, you're wasting your money sending traffic there. We'll talk about that here in a minute. The second thing is, is, you know, if you haven't done a lot of SEO and you're not showing up in the map pack or or organically, you're going to you need to run Google Apps. And if you and if you don't run Google Apps, run Google Local. I guess it's called Google Guaranteed these days. OK, but you got to get up there at the top of that page so that people can actually find you. OK, now my preference and I'm not going to talk about Google guaranteed at all. My preference is always Google ads. It drives traffic to your website. It works beautifully. The leads are cheaper. Um, but there's a but in there. 
Um, Google ads can be more expensive. So if you're just starting out and you've got, say, only four or five, six hundred dollars a month to spend, get a Google guaranteed account and start running that. You don't need anybody like me to manage it. You can do that yourself. It's pretty simple to do. OK, so number two, run Google apps. If you can't afford it, do Google local or do both. You know, uh, Google local is about phone calls and you run those, you know, eight to five Monday through Friday. Uh, Google Ads is 24-7, which is part of the reason I like them. Um, and, um, you know, they're basically pulling in leads while you're sleeping. Okay. Number three, do SEO as soon as you can. That ASAP doesn't mean like run, do it now. ASAP means exactly what that says, as soon as possible. I know when you're first starting out, it's hard to afford. It can be expensive. So I'm just saying when you get big enough, and when you get to the $25,000, $30,000 um, a month revenue, you know, add Google ads as soon as you can. I mean, add, excuse me, SEO as soon as you can, because that is gold. OK, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about that later and why it's so important to do SEO. OK, number four, stop losing leads by adding email marketing. Um, I sell keep and I sell campaigns for cleaning business owners to use to email market um, to their leads. The big thing about email marketing is when you don't make a sale today, you don't want to lose that lead. You can only call them so many times before you feel like you're stalking them. And if you don't have some kind of email marketing going, um, that lead's going to evaporate. And by golly, you paid for it. So why not hang on to it and continue to market to them until hopefully they're ready to buy? And then last but not least, um, have a strong retention strategy. A lot of people wonder why retention strategy should be in my marketing plan. Well, it absolutely should. OK, because retaining customers is easier than getting new ones. All right. And it's definitely cheaper because you've already bought and paid for them. Um, so making sure that you're retaining your employees will certainly uh, impact your marketing budget um, because you don't have to replace them. OK, so uh, don't lose customers, I guess, is the, the key message there. Let's talk about websites. OK, so a bad website costs more than a new one. I promise you that is true. Absolutely. A bad website costs more than a new website. So you need to get a good one. OK, that's just all there is to it. Um, if you send traffic to a website that doesn't do its job, which is to convert and inform. OK, then you're going to get people bouncing, going to your website, looking around, not buying, not filling out a form, not picking up the phone. And you are literally wasting your money. Do that for four or five months. And guess what? You could have bought a new website. OK, so definitely everybody needs a decent website. And let's talk about what that is. Um, this is a website that I built uh, over the last few days, and um, it's got the components that I think you need to you need to understand about a website. They need to look professional, right? Um, they don't have to be absolutely gorgeous either. It, don't get me wrong. It doesn't have to be a beautiful website, but it does have to be a functional website. And what you want is for your website to have a lot of call to actions because Real honestly, its job is to convert. And what that means is to get somebody to pick up the phone and call you or fill out a form, right? So we want all kinds of call to actions. These are call to actions. And we want them to be big, beautiful, colorful. We want them to jump out and shout, hey, do this, right? And we want them everywhere. Okay, so lots of call to actions, professional website. So professional goes without saying, you know, if it looks like a um, if it looks like a third grader built it, then it's probably not professional. OK, just look at it from the eyes of the person landing there and ask yourself, you know, would you be impressed? OK, if you were visiting. Uh, secondly, like I mentioned, call to actions. You want them big and colorful and you want them everywhere on every page. OK, and when it comes to informing People do need to be informed. They have questions sometimes about your services, you know, what services you offer and a little bit about them, um, you know, but don't put a ton of information. They don't need to read, you know, a paragraph with 14 sentences. Um, they're Number one, they're just not going to read it. So it's got to be laid out in such a way that people can scan, uh, find the information they need, and that it, that information is written well enough in a marketing sort of way that it entices them to want to push a button, okay, to make a phone call, 
or fill out a form. Okay, so you got to have a high converting website. It doesn't have to be super expensive, um, but you need to have one if you don't already. Okay. Number two, Google Ads. If you haven't done any SEO and you're not showing up organically, uh, then you need to start with Google Ads. That's really the only place to, the only way to show up. You buy your way onto the first page of Google. Okay. So let's look at Google Ads here for a second. So these are your Google Ads. Um, here's a search term. So somebody types in Cleaning Service Arlington. That's where my business is located. And Google Ads are going to pop up. Okay. And, uh, you know, you couldn't be any higher on the page than this. Now, there are some Google Ad positions below the organic section. Most of us don't like those too much. Still first page, but it's way down at the bottom. This is the prime real estate, and this is the real estate that you want. Okay. Now, what I'm going to tell you about running Google Ads is, are three things. Okay. Um, you need a minimum budget of $30 a day. There are plenty of people that will, you know, encourage you to spend less. I'm going to tell you, I manage about 45 Google Ads account for cleaning business owners. And most of the time, the lead flow that you get from a $15 a day budget uh, is a trickle. Uh, and it's almost like you can't feel the lead flow because seriously, it's uh, it's probably less than one lead a day. OK, so try to make sure that when you do start Google Ads, you know, if you're going to do it, do it right. Budget at least thirty dollars a day. Now, 50, 60, 70, 100 dollars a day works great if you can afford it. And I have plenty of customers that are putting bigger bucks into it. But at a minimum, small business, thirty dollars a day, nine hundred dollars a month. And then hire somebody to help you, okay? And don't run smart ads. Smart ads are the kind of ads that Google puts together so that you, if you don't know how to run Google ads, they make it kind of easy for the amateur to do it. Um, I say don't run them because I've never seen one that worked well, okay? No matter what you do, even when I get in there and tinker with them, I can't make them convert the way they're supposed to convert, right? Uh, so basically, they're wasting money. They might be wasting this amount, that you would pay somebody like myself to manage your Google Ads and do a good job of it, okay? Now, if you do have a Google Ads account and you have a Google Ads manager, hold them accountable. Almost every customer I bring on, I get them on the phone and I say, look, this is how you hold me accountable. Uh, I show them all the numbers and I show them what is good, what is not good, and I tell them to check up on me and to make sure that we're hitting the numbers we need to hit for them. It's not hidden in the background. I think all of us as cleaning as, as business owners need to understand at least enough about the metrics of the, the stuff we're doing so that we can so we can know whether the people we're paying are doing a good job. OK, so the two things that you would look at is you'd log into your account and you go to overview. OK, so you look at your overview and you're going to see some numbers there. These are all little drop downs. But somewhere along the line, pick one of these drop downs and look at your conversion rate and your cost per conversion. OK, like I said, I manage a lot of Google Ads accounts, so I know what cleaning businesses can get in Google Ads in most markets. OK, that's the caveat. Not all markets. I've, I've hit some that you can't get this. But in most markets and decent sized cities, um, this is not too hard to get. OK, what you're really looking for is a 20 percent or better conversion rate, $30 or less in your cost for conversion. These are pretty realistic. I can get way better than this in some markets, some markets a little bit less, but generally speaking, these are good numbers. 20% conversion rate or better, $30 or less cost per conversion. What that basically means is you're paying $30 or less for your leads, okay? And that's quite a value. I think if you do Home Advisor or Angie's List, I mean, those leads are in the 40s and 50s these days. So this is this is really a good bargain. And um, I'm a numbers nut, so I, I keep a lot of numbers on uh, my own business. And my conversion rate, not my conversion rate, my cost of acquisition for one recurring customer using Google AdWords is about $129. So remember, the average is 200. Google Ads, I can get one recurring customer for 129. Okay. Um, last year, I wish I'd put this slide in here. It would have been interesting to you. But last year, 
and COVID year on top of it, I spent $12,000, average $1,000 a month on Google Ads and brought in 102 new recurring customers for, a, uh, I think the, uh, I think the, the new revenue brought in by Google Ads was like 350000 Okay. Not bad in a COVID year. Am I right? Okay. So Google Ads is a great way to build your business. Next step. Okay. So this is as soon as possible. Remember, we're not saying rush, but we're saying as soon as you can fit it into your budget, you know, add SEO to the mix. Okay. The big thing is, is you want that map section. That's the gold. Right. Uh, the organic section is not bad either, but the map section is really where most people shop. OK, it's visual. It's down there under the maps. Uh, people know that they're not paid ads. They're very related to your reviews. Um, so it's a great place to to be. OK. So the map pack, like I said, this is the marketing gold. So underneath the map, you've got actually there's actually an ad here. That's a Google ad. Sometimes they'll sneak those in. But there's three positions here, right? And you want to be in one of those three positions because that is where people shop. If they can find you here, you don't need Google Ads. I'm telling you. And I'm going to show you here in a minute why you don't need Google Ads if you're in the map pack. Okay. Um, SEO, which I know most of you already know this, it's a longer term process. So for some period of time while you're doing SEO in the beginning, you're it feels like you're paying for nothing because you're really not getting any leads. OK, uh, somebody is behind the scenes building your building up your rankings from wherever you are to wherever you're going to go. Um, but, you know, you're on page three, page four, page five, whatever. But over time, you eventually get to the first page if you've got somebody doing a good job with your SEO. OK, it can take, you know, six months, depending on where you start, actually, and how you know, uh, competitive your market is. It can take six months. It can take a year. But uh, if you if you work at it uh, consistently, uh, you can definitely get there. OK, what does it cost? It can be expensive. You know, I would say my, my packages that that work really well usually run around 700 to uh, I'd say 700 to 1500. OK, for most people. Um, and the difference between 700 and 1500 is literally the number of pages that are optimized and the number of SEO tasks that are completed each month. If you go to the lower end, you're just basically doing fewer SEO things every month. You're probably optimizing fewer pages. Uh, the 1500, you're doing more pages, you're doing more SEO tasks. And the difference there is simply speed. OK, um, speed and the number of pages that you're ultimately going to rank for. OK, so you don't have to necessarily, if you can't afford it, pay fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars for SEO. Um, what you can do is go for a smaller package and, um, you know, go a little slower, but at least you're going. That's the big thing. You're moving towards that first page. You're just not going at lightning speed. OK, but, you know, the budget's different, too, and, and it's not as expensive. Now, once you get to the first page, this is something I want you to know. Is it, and this is what a lot of SEO providers won't tell you. Once you get to the first page, you don't have to keep paying the big bucks, right? So let's say you went for a, uh, you know, fourteen or fifteen or sixteen hundred dollar package. Once you're on page one, you should be able to drop back to kind of a maintenance package, so that you maintain your rankings. You can't quit, by the way. Don't ever quit your SEO because there's other people doing it, and they'll come up and just kick you right off the first page. OK, but you definitely can back off a bit and you can drop your package back, save some money and maintain those rankings. OK, so you shouldn't have to pay the big bucks, but a year or so after that, you should be able to back off. OK, and this last piece that's on in yellow is super important. SEO is the cheapest marketing you can do. OK, doesn't feel like it in the beginning. And actually, in the beginning, it's not. But once you get going and once you're on that first page and in the map pack, it truly is the cheapest marketing you can do. OK, so this is your map pack. Just just as a reminder, this is your organic. I will tell you something about organic results. It's great to be there. Um, my company is there. Right. So so basically you can get there. But I want you to notice who's on here. Care.com, Yelp, Made Brigade, Made Pro, Angie's List Home Advisor. Uh, that's who you're competing with to get on the in the first page of Google in the organic section. 
there's only so many spots and the big franchises and then Yelp and the lead generation services generally like to eat up that space. Uh, what I'm here to tell you, though, is that you can get there. Um, and if you do good SEO, you can be there, you know, for a lot of different searches. OK, um, but it is a crowded little place to try to get into. Um, this is some um, data from from uh, a tool called CallRail. I keep track of all my leads using a tool called CallRail uh, and I track calls and I track forms. OK, and the purpose for putting this on here is to show you how powerful um, SEO is when you're in the map section or even organic because this has both. So for calls, this is for the last 30 days, last 30 days. It's a little blurry, but that's what it is. And I ran this today, so it truly is the last 30 days. So in the last 30 days, I've done no Google Ads. I haven't run Google Ads in several months, okay? Um, I had 154, that's what that says, 154 calls from Google My Business. That is from the map section. That is directly from SEO. I had 10 calls, I think it's right here, organic, right? 10 calls from organic traffic. So those are my calls. So that's 164 phone calls um, from SEO. And then if you go down here to form attrition, uh, Google My Business, I had 79 form fills. People that came to my website filled out my request to quote form. And I had 86 form fills from organic traffic. I always find this interesting that, uh, you know, Google My Business people tend to go to phone calls and uh, organic traffic, which is Google Organic and Yelp Organic, tends to go to forms. But anyway, you add that all together, that's 329 real leads. That's phone calls and form bills that came from SEO that I spent a lot of money on to get where I'm at. And guess what I'm spending today? I'm spending four or $500 on SEO to maintain my rankings. Okay. And let me show you what that looks like. Again, it's blurry, but I couldn't blow it up any, any better than this. Um, so these are all, this is Arlington where I'm located, my, my uh, cleaning business. And these are all my keywords. House cleaning Arlington, uh, house cleaning, house cleaning, cleaning service, maid service. Anyway, you get the drift, right? So I've got a whole bunch of the major keywords that you would want to go after for a cleaning business. And I want you to look here. This is for June 30th, which is, I think, today. Um, see all those pins? That's map placement. I am in the first, second, or third position in the map section for every keyword that I could come up with. Okay. And the number over here that you see is where I am organically. So what this, this picture basically tells you is that my website for every keyword related to a cleaning business is both in the map section and uh, shows up organically in the bottom down there with Made Brigade and Yelp and, and all of that. That is good SEO. And this last month, I spent, let's see, three, six, uh, I've spent probably $1,100 in marketing. For a company doing 329 leads, that is crazy. Okay. And uh, so anyway, there's the value of SEO. Again, it feels like you're paying for nothing. It can be exp can feel expensive, but eventually it's the cheapest marketing that you will do. Okay. Secret sauce number four, uh, stop losing leads. Okay. So uh, you guys all probably know I sell keep and automated email marketing uh, campaigns already built for cleaning businesses. Uh, and this is the role that they play in your marketing strategy. So all of your marketing, your Google guaranteed, Google ads, SEO, whatever you're doing, is built to pull basically strangers uh, into your funnel. OK, uh, you pay for things. People click. They go to your website. They call. But you're trying to pull people into your sales funnel so you can quote them. OK, now you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. OK, the ones that you win turn into new customers and the ones that you don't win become lost leads. OK, and if you didn't have keep, they would probably stay lost leads. OK, um, also, one other thing I want to mention about uh, email marketing is it's not it's not this kind of marketing. If you're buying list and marketing cult to cold list that you bought, then I would call it marketing. But it, in this case, you're really not marketing to strangers. You're marketing to people you've either quoted or you've sold. OK, so in your sales process, new customers, lost leads, you should have a customer wow funnel. 
which includes all the things that you do to keep your customers happy and loyal. Okay. But in spite of all your efforts, you know this, um, you're going to lose a few. Okay. You're going to lose some customers. The role that Keep or email marketing plays is to take these lost leads and these lost customers and to route them back into your funnel month after month after month. They're not ready to buy now. They're going to get those emails. And the best example I can give you is like Bed Bath & Beyond because just about everybody I know gets a Bed Bath & Beyond email. So here's the thing about Bed Bath & Beyond emails. There's a coupon in there for 20% off right? Not a huge believer in discounts, but this is how it works, right? You get that email every single month. The only reason you don't unsubscribe from that list is you know that coupon is in there and you know someday you might be looking for sheets, right? So you don't open that email unless you're looking for something to buy at Bed Bath & Beyond. You just sort of let it roll past. But the next time you need sheets or some kind of kitchen gadget, right? Where do you think about going? You think about going to Bed Bath & Beyond, and by golly, you're going to open that email because you know there's a 20% discount in there. That's the way email marketing works, right? You send them something three times a month. You stay in front of their face. You offer them something of value like a discount, and chances are they don't even open it. But when they need a cleaning service, if they didn't unsubscribe, there's a reason why they didn't unsubscribe. They thought they might need you someday right? They're going to click on that email and call you, okay? And if Molly Maid and Mary Maid and all the other Maid Maids aren't doing the same thing, you are way ahead of the game. And there's so many people that are not doing email marketing that just drives me crazy because it, it is truly one of the most cost-effective things you can do. Um, email marketing runs $99 a month with Keep. That's pretty doggone cheap. And my... Um, my marketing campaigns run 1800 If you combine it with some other things I sell, I cut the price in half. So for like less than $1,000, you can have email marketing that goes to prospects and customers, integrates with your ZenMade or any other scheduling system that you have, and it's quite the system. Okay, so you hear me. You hear it in my voice. I get excited when I talk about Keep. So anyway. Uh, I suggest everybody needs Keep. Now, there is a place, I would say, get Keep once you're marketing. If you're spending money on marketing and you're collecting leads and capturing lead information, please get Keep so you don't lose that leads and you can continue to market to, um, to those people. Okay. So if you ask me, perfect growth machine involves three things, right? Uh, first of all, a winning marketing strategy. So, you have to have a good enough budget, you know, do the five, seven, 10%, you know, do what you can afford. Um, and if you can afford more, do more, you know, if, if you want to grow more. So put together a great marketing budget, get a high converting website. Again, it's foundational. Don't get a website. I mean, don't market without a decent website. If you want an audit for your website, I'm always happy to look and tell you whether um, it looks like it's going to convert. Does it have the elements um, that it needs to have? OK, and then number three, get, I get I had a typo, get found on the first page of Google. Um, that's that's the main strategy. Now, I'm not saying don't ever do Valpac or mail, money mail or postcards or uh, Angie's List or Home Advisor. You know, I'm not saying don't ever do those things, but don't do them first. OK, save those for when you got extra money and when you've maxed out your Google Ads budget. OK, spend as much on Google Ads until you can't spend any more and then go spend your money somewhere else. That's my thought. So that's your winning marketing strategy. The second thing is, is if you do that well, you're going to get a steady flow of leads. OK, you got the right budget, great website. You're on the first page of Google. Your phone's going to ring and people are going to come fill out your forms. OK, then email automation. OK, you add keep to the mix and then what you're doing is you're systematizing a lot of your marketing. You're capturing leads, you're nurturing quotes, and you're not nurturing them every now and then when you have the time, you're nurturing them all the time. It's automated. You're nurturing your prospects, three emails a month. Think Bed Bath & Beyond. For your customers, you're emailing them too. You're doing upsells, you're asking for reviews, you're asking for referrals. And if somebody quits, you're trying to win them back. Okay, this is a great growth machine. Okay, you can add to it, but this is the basics. 
And lastly, have a strong retention strategy. So in my book, customer retention trumps marketing because saving a customer is cheaper than getting a new one. Okay, we all should be doing everything that we can to save our customers and not lose them. You know, you're going to lose some. But, you know, if you have good quality, good quality, good quality control, um, once you get them, try to keep them. It's it's the cheapest way to do it. Um, and the truth is, is that if you lose a customer, now you got to go find another one. And it, that costs. Uh, market to your current customers. You know, they are a gold mine in some respects. You can do upsells. You can sell gift cards to them. Uh, you can ask for reviews and referrals and turn your current customers into a uh, your own little marketing engine. OK, because, you know, reviews are king. You know, if you've got I think my company, we have 203 reviews and they're all great. Right. Nothing speaks higher than what other customers have said about your business. Work your tush off getting reviews, accumulate them. Once you get to 100, you're what I call bulletproof. Then you're not really going to be impacted too negatively by, you know, one or two bad reviews. OK, stay on top of them and make sure you respond to them when you get them. And I think for me, that's just about it. So we'll do a little recap. Get your website in order. Start Google Ads. If you need help, give me a shout. Uh, add local SEO um, to get in the map section and to move on to the first page organically. I do that too. I've got a team that does it. I don't do it personally. Um, stop losing leads, right, with email marketing. Um, it's just the cheapest marketing you can do, and it's a great component. It's not something that can stand alone, though, by the way. You can't just have keep and let that be your marketing strategy. It has to be fit, it has to fit into a marketing strategy that also includes paid advertising or paid marketing. And lastly, um, have a strong retention strategy and, and keep the customers that you pay, you work so hard to get and pay so much money to get. Um, that is it for me. I talked really fast. I tried to get through this as fast as I could, so I didn't. I don't even know what the what the time limit is. But anyway, we're just under forty five minutes. Um, if you need me, uh, here's some contact information on Facebook. I'm Ginger Mead Whitson. That's my uh, main name. Just just reach out. All you gotta do is PM me, and I do all kinds of free marketing audits, and I'm always happy to help. Um, whether or not I sell you anything doesn't matter. Um, my biggest goal is always just to be helpful. So give me a shout if you need me. And thank you very much for your time. I hope this was helpful.